Hello, I'm Dr. Smerat. I'm one of the interventional cardiologists at the Heart and Vascular Clinics. We're part of the Manhattan Specialist Center. Today I'm here with you to talk to you about something called a pacemaker or a defibrillator, or if you hear the term ICD. Now, before we speak about this, I want to talk a little bit with you about the disease itself or the heart and how it works. The way we're, the way we're designed is our heart is really the pump of the body. Now, the muscle is the engine, and it squeezes and keeps blood moving. The, the brain of that process is really an electrical grid system that's present inside the heart itself. So when you think about your car, you know the engine is being run, there's an electrical battery, and then there's a, there are a bunch of wires coming out from that battery connected throughout the car, and they run the functions of the car or control how these things happen. So the same thing really is happening inside the heart. There's an actual battery or generator inside the heart. It's a bunch of cells. We counted them. There's about 30,000 of them. They're sitting in your right atrium. And their job is to fire electricity every once in a while. From that battery, a bunch of wires come out and they really travel throughout the muscle of the heart itself and connect to the muscle of the ventricles. The idea behind this design is that for every beat of the heart, it starts with that battery firing an impulse of electricity down the wires to the muscle. And the electrical activity organizes how the muscle squeezes, so we don't just squish blood in the heart with no purpose, but rather push it towards the rest of the body. Now, electrical abnormalities can happen in this grid system. Disease can happen in this grid system. And you have to imagine, this has been literally, literally working every beat of your heart since the moment you were born and all the way until the end with every single beat. So you can imagine that at one point there's going to be some wear and tear effect. That translates into multiple diseases. Sometimes the battery could malfunction in the sense that it's not firing like it's supposed to or it's not picking up the pace when, for example, you're going for a walk, your heart is supposed to beat a little faster and the battery is supposed to do that. Now maybe it doesn't. It might be that one or two of the wires is down and it's not conducting electricity anymore and that's causing problems. It might be that there's some kind of blockages in the electrical grid system or in certain stations of it. And all of these eventually will lead to what we call sick sinus syndrome. It's a big fancy term that we invented to just say that the, there is a problem in the electrical grid system that's resulting in your heart beating slow or way too slow or slow with symptoms. Symptoms that you can experience can be sometimes fatigue, feeling weak, feeling tired, and I stress this because usually this is a disease of age. And a lot of times what a 75-year-old gentleman or woman would say is, oh, this must be what it feels like to be 75. And the reality is no, you're supposed to be more active, but you're actually having a disease in the electrical grid system of your heart that's causing you to feel those symptoms of fatigue or weakness. Sometimes it might be by you feeling dizzy or lightheaded. It can be all the way to you feeling that you're about to lose consciousness or actually losing consciousness because of this. So when we eventually diagnose this problem and we find that you have symptoms and then we find an electrical abnormality or, or slow heart rate, the next question we ask ourselves, is it reversible or not? Because it could be reversible because you had a cold or because you are, are taking a medication that causes this or because kidney disease is causing some electrolyte abnormality in your potassium or sodium or whatever it is and then your heart is slow as a response. So in that case, we really work on what's the main issue and try to reverse the problem and that's it. Sometimes it's an irreversible problem in the sense that even though everything around the heart is doing okay, the heart is still slow and not doing what it's supposed to do. And at that point, the solution becomes if, if the God-made electrical grid system is not working, we put a man-made electrical grid system. And this man-made electrical grid system is what a pacemaker is. 
it's consistent of a small device that really we usually put in a pocket we create under your skin, usually on the left side, below your collarbone. And then from that battery, a couple of wires will go travel through your veins to the right atrium and the right ventricle. And they really will just embed in the muscle and sit there. And what this device will do now, it really will, number one, monitor your heart electrically. So it's like an indefinite EKG or electrocardiogram, non-stop monitoring your heart. And it will give the chance to your own electrical grid system to do what it's supposed to do. But then when it sees that it's failing to do that at certain times, then it will detect it and kick in so that it will cover the gap. And that's why we call it sometimes demand pacemaker. So this is the whole concept behind, what, behind why we put a pacemaker. The procedure itself, it's a common procedure, it's a safe procedure. It's not surgery. You're not going to be out. There's not going to be general anesthesia. There's not going to be a breathing tube down your throat. We give you some sedation so you're comfortable. And we give you numbing medication in this area so you don't feel any pain. And we really make a small incision. And then with our equipment, we're able to kind of create a pocket under your skin and make space for this small battery that we're going to put here. And then the veins are exposed. We enter the veins and then guide our wires under X-ray guidance into your heart. And then once we're done, we basically suture the skin and really spend usually a day with us sometimes so that we can monitor it. You're going to have a sling so that, you know, everything here is settled just until your body builds some tissue around the device and fixes it in place and so that you don't bleed. So you're going to have a sling. It's going to be there for a week approximately. We're going to ask you not to do any of these movements for, for the time being, for a week at least. And then the pacemaker will really be in. Once you have a pacemaker in, every about three months we're going to interrogate the device because now we have this device that's monitoring your heart and stop. And it can give us a lot of information that can help us through your management. So that's what a pacemaker is. Now the second thing that you might hear is a defibrillator or an ICD. This is basically a similar concept but different purposes. It also entails the same device and one single wire inside your heart. What this is doing is really monitoring your heart nonstop. And what it's looking for is a dangerous electrical abnormality. Sometimes for different diseases of the heart can make the heart prone to have certain electrical abnormalities or electrical shorts, if you will that are really dangerous. If you ever heard of the term ventricular fibrillation or ventricular tachycardia, these can be as bad as lethal rhythms. They're basically a manifestation of a different kind of disease that's happening in the heart. But remember, it's the same organ. So if one part is, is, is sick, then it's gonna affect the other parts. And one of those other parts is the electricity of the heart. Now the unfortunate reality is some of these electrical rhythms, they can happen suddenly. We cannot predict when they're gonna happen and if they're gonna happen. And they really can kill people on the spot. And if you heard of the term sudden cardiac death, that's usually electrical. So that's why the solution became, well, let's put a device that will monitor the patient nonstop if we think they are at risk of having these sudden dangerous rhythms and that will recognize it if it happens and then delivers the treatment on the spot so that there's no one or two hours lag time until the EMS comes in or the patient is transferred to the hospital. And these are very da dangerous minutes that can really mean the difference between life and death. And this is where the concept of a defibrillator came along. So this device is monitoring your heart nonstop and if, God forbid, one of those rhythms happen, which is rare to begin with, then it will recognize it, and on the spot it's going to administer shock, jumpstart your heart, and save your life. So that's what a defibrillator is. Now, a pacemaker can be a defibrillator. A defibrillator, generally speaking, can function sometimes as a pacemaker. They both can be in the same device. So it doesn't mean you're getting two batteries or extra wires and so on. 
it can be the same device, but with multiple functions. One of those functions is a pacemaker, one of those functions is a defibrillator. But I want you to understand that we're dealing with two separate issues. A defibrillator is there to recognize any dangerous rhythms and shock you out of them. A pacemaker is there to monitor your heart and to kick in every time your own electrical grid system is not doing its job, so it would compensate for that. Um, I hope I answered most or some of your questions about what a pacemaker is, what a defibrillator is, is. And please remember, if you have any issues, concerns, or questions, always speak to your cardiologist about them. Thank you.